Today we're going to talk about mixed strategy Nash equilibria. In a mixed strategy Nash equilibria, a player lets chance or a player lets randomization determine what he does. So if a player doesn't randomize, he'll pick, say, just A or he'll pick just B. But if he allows a randomizer to decide, he could say, randomizer, you pick A for me 90% of the time and pick B for me 10% of the time. When would a player be willing to do that? Well, when would you be willing to let a randomizer decide if you're going to see, say, the movie Jurassic Park or Star Wars? Imagine you have to see one of the two movies. When would you be willing to let chance decide which movie you'll end up seeing? It would only be if you got the exact same payoff from seeing either movie. If you like, if you thought you'd like Jurassic Park just a little bit more than Star Wars, you should see Jurassic Park. Again, it's only if you get the exact same payoff from either choice should you be willing to randomize. Now, in this example, player one will only be willing to randomize between A and B if he gets, on average, the same payoff from A as he does from B. That will happen if he believes X will be played half the time and Y will be played half the time. Given these probabilities, you know, if two is using a randomizer with these probabilities, if one plays A, he gets X, he gets six half the time, and zero half the time. So if he plays A, on average, he gets three. If he plays B, he gets zero half the time and six half the time. On average, he also gets three. So given these probabilities and payoffs, player one is willing to randomize. He's also willing to not randomize. He gets the same payoff from A or B. He's willing to just play A or just play B. But he's also willing to do any probability combination, not just one half, one half. He would be willing to play A 90% of the time and B 10% of the time. Because no matter what probabilities he picked, his average payoff would be three. Okay, I've changed the payoffs for player one. Um, Player one would now be willing to randomize if X is played with probability 1 over 101 and Y is played with probability 100 over 101. The reason this is is because given those probabilities, player one has the same average payoff from playing A as he would from B. Let's see why. You play A, you get 100, 1, 1 over 101 with 1 over 101 probability and 0 with 100 over 101 probability. So that means your average payoff from playing A is 100 times 1 over 101 plus 0 times 100 over 101. And that just comes out to be 100 over 101. If you play B, you get 0 times 1 over 101 plus 1 times 100 over 101, and that just comes out to be 100 over 101. So given these probabilities, you get the same average payoff if you play A as you do B. So given these probabilities, player 1 is indifferent between A and B. That means he's willing to just play A, willing to just play B, or willing to let um, fate determine it, willing to let chance determine how he plays. Let's investigate why this number had to be much smaller than this number. Well, you think about A or B, right? You're going to get zero or you're going to get something. Now, the something if you play A is much better than the something if you play B. So the only way you'd be indifferent between A and B is if the chance of, you know, kind of getting the good thing is a lot smaller with A as it is with B. And that's why this number has to be a lot smaller than this number for player one to be willing to randomize. All right, now we're going to figure out when is player two willing to randomize given these new payoffs? Well, I got to claim it's with this probability, with these probabilities. So if player one, player two believes player one is going to play A three-fourths of the time and B one-fourth of the time, then player two is willing to randomize. Let's see why. Given these probabilities, player two plays X, 
he figures he gets one three-fourths of the time and zero one-fourth of the time. That means player two figures his average payoff is one times three-fourths plus zero times one-fourth, and that comes out to be, of course, three-fourths. If player two picks Y, he gets zero times three-fourths plus three times one-fourth, and that's also three-fourths. So given these probabilities, player two is indifferent between X and Y, and if he's indifferent between X and Y, he's willing to just play X, willing to just play Y, but he's also willing to randomize. He'd be willing to play X 10% of the time, Y 90% of the time, X 1% of the time, Y 99% of the time, or any other combination as long as the probability is sum to one. Okay, now I've written, I've come up with a game where I've written in the payoffs for both players. Let's find all of the Nash equilibria in this game. Now, there are two pure strategy Nash equilibria. Remember, you have a Nash equilibria if both players are happy with their choice once they find out what the other person's choice is. So you can imagine, you know, player one and two both secretly write down what they're going to do. They reveal. If neither say, oh, gee, if only I'd known what you would have done, I would have done something different, then you have a Nash equilibria. So AX is a Nash equilibria because if you know, player one picks A, player two is happy picking X. And if player two picks X, player one would be happy if he picked A. BY is also a Nash equilibria because if Y is picked, player one would be happy picking B. And if B is picked, player two is happy picking Y. Bx, however, is not a Nash equilibrium because both people would regret that choice. You're player one and you see player two picked X, you'd be like, oh my gosh, I really wish I didn't pick B. I wish I'd picked A. So not a Nash equilibrium and this, for similar reasons, not a Nash equilibrium. This game, however, has a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium where A is played half the time, B is played half the time, X is played half the time, and Y is played half the time. So what's going on here with this mixed strategy Nash equilibria is both players, when they play, they write down randomize, pick A half the time and B half the time. Or player two says randomize, pick X half the time and Y half the time. And if they both do that, that's a Nash equilibria. The reason is neither would regret their choice given what the other person did. If X is played half the time and Y is played half the time, Player one says, well, you know, if I were to pick just A, I'd get one half the time and zero half the time, so I get an average one half. If I pick just B, I'd get zero half the time and one half the time, so I get an average one half. I would get the same payoff from playing A as I do from playing B. I'd get one half either way. That makes player one indifferent between A and B. In fact, player one is indifferent among anything she could possibly do because her payoff is, is just going to be the probability she plays A times one half plus the probability she plays B times one half. Sorry for all the one halves. So player one is happy randomizing if player two is picking one half, one half. Player two is happy doing anything. She would be happy just playing A, just playing B, or picking any possible probabilities. But that means she would be happy playing the probabilities one half and one half. Player two, likewise, is indifferent between X and Y given his payoffs and given these probabilities. If player two picks X, right, he gets one half the time and zero half the time. On average, player two gets one half. If player two picks Y, she gets zero half the time and one half the time. So on average, player two gets one half. So player two, is indifferent between X and Y, meaning player two is willing to just play X, just play Y, or pick any you no know, possible combination, including one half and one half. So this game, this one half, one half, one half, one half is a Nash equilibria because given what each player is doing, the other player is indifferent among anything he or she could possibly do, including one half, one half. What this means is if A is picked half the time and B is picked half the time, X is picked half the time and Y is picked half the time, 
you know, the, the randomizer would throw the parties here a fourth of the time, here a fourth, here a fourth, and here a fourth of the time. And that is a Nash equilibria. Okay. Uh, let's go on and let's look at the Nash equilibria in this game. First, there are no pure strategy Nash equilibria in this game. Let's examine why. This is not a Nash equilibria because player two would regret playing X if one played A. This is not a Nash equilibria because player one would regret playing B if player two played X. Because, you know, player one would say, well, gee, if I'd known X is going to be played, I wouldn't have played B. I would have gone A to get the one. This can't be a Nash equilibria, AY, because player one would regret playing A if she knew that Y was going to be played because she'd rather, you know, play B and get the one. And this is not a Nash equilibria because player two would regret playing Y if she find, when she finds out that B has been played. So this game does not have a Nash equilibria where there are no randomizations involved. That's by the way called a pure Nash equilibria. Pure means no one's randomizing. But let me tell you a secret. In every single game like this, there's going to exist at least one Nash equilibria. And if there's no pure strategy Nash equilibria, then there's going to be one involving randomization. The proof of that is something I'm not going to ever do in these lectures, but trust me on this one. Now, the one half, one half, one half, one half, that is going to work for the mixed strategy Nash equilibria because with these probabilities, both players are indifferent among you know, A or B or X or Y. So for example, with the one half, one half, player one plays A, he gets one half the time and zero half the time. So on average, he gets one half. If he plays B, he gets zero half the time and one half the time. On average, again, he gets one half. So these probabilities make player one indifferent. And if player one is indifferent between A and B, He's willing to play just A, just B, or any probability combination, including one half, one half. Now for player two, given these probabilities, player two is indifferent between X and Y. Right? If you play X, you'll say, well, I get, you know, A will be played half the time and I'll get zero. B will be played half the time and I'll get two. On average, I get one if I play X. And if I play Y, well, A is played half the time and I get two. B is played half the time where I get zero. So on average, I get one. So player two would say, I get on average one if I play X and one if I play Y. So I'm indifferent between X and Y. I'm willing to randomize in any way I want, including one half, one half. So these four one halves, that will create a mixed strategy Nash equilibria. Okay. So for our final game for today's uh, session, I've given you slightly different payoffs, and these this determines these probabilities will give you another mixed strategy Nash equilibria. You might want to pause right now and, and verify this for yourself. Okay, I'll, I'll now explain why this is a mixed strategy Nash equilibria. Well, again, to be a mixed strategy Nash equilibria, player one has to be indifferent between A and B, player two has to be indifferent between X and Y. So player one plays A, well, she gets two one-third of the time and two two-thirds of the time. Well, that's really easy to figure out. On average, she gets two. If player one plays B, she gets six one-third of the time and zero two-thirds of the time. We multiply that out. That's six times one-third plus zero times two-thirds, which comes out to be two. So player one gets two on average if she picks A, and two on average if she picks B, meaning she on average she gets the same. Now some of you might be thinking, but wait, what if player player one doesn't like risk? You know, might that she prefer A to B? Well, actually in game theory, we assume in these games that the players only care about their average payoff. Um, there's complicated reasons why this isn't as silly as it might sound if, if you've had intermediate microeconomics. These are really utility numbers, and we're talking expected utility theorem um, issues. But for right now, just, just accept that in, the, in these simple games, the default assumption 
is that players just care about their average payoff. And this actually is not one of the silly simplifying assumptions economists make. There are deep reasons why this is, this is reasonable. All right, for player two, player two is indifferent between X and Y. If you place X, we get four no matter what. You don't even have to look at these probabilities. If you play Y, you get 16 one-fourth of the time and zero three-fourths of the time. That means if you play Y, you get your average payoff is one-fourth times 16 plus three-fourths times zero. That comes out to be four. So player two's average payoff is four if she plays Y. So player two is indifferent between X and Y, meaning she is willing to mix. So it's kind of interesting. Player To get player one to be willing to mix, we need to set the probabilities for player two. And for player two to be willing to mix, we need to set the probabilities for player one. Now, I haven't told you how I got these numbers. I'll, I'll do that in a, in a later lecture. Um, all I've done so far is saying if you know if someone gives you these numbers, you can see why that will yield a mixed strategy Nash equilibria. Thank you very much.